Hi, in this video we will be continuing to review my book Sadakhshalak, The Art of Making and Shooting the Kazakh Horsebow and we will talk a little bit about the history of the horsebow archery on the territory of Kazakhstan. Now, of course, uh, I am in, in no way claiming that uh, Kazakhs had uh, any kind of separate uh, type of archery from uh, the neighbors or that it was uh, superior or something else we perfectly realized that it was part of this one big giant family of uh, asiatic horsebow but uh, there were some distinctive features about it on the territory of kazakhstan the types that went through it and i'm i will try to briefly talk about it as it is written in my book so basically, um, we know that the first bows uh, appeared within the transitional uh, semi-nomadic culture on the territory of Kazakhstan, such as Andronovo and uh, Afanasyevo cultures. And uh, uh, we know today that these were the tribes that invented uh, chariots and the first archery was performed of the chariots because at that point they couldn't ride horses yet but the true uh, uh, horseback archery was born along on the territory of Kazakhstan with the uh, eastern Scythian tribes uh, called Saka we call them Saka nobody knows what they were actually called for sure because that's the name uh, that the Persians and Greeks referred to them as an Eastern Scythians. Uh, we don't know what their self names were, but we refer to them as Saka. And basically, as I always say to make it simple, Sakars are Eastern Scythians and Scythians are Western Sakas. So it, it's just the same pretty much exact culture. Anyways, and the Saka people I, I, all, I use this uh, term a lot, uh, so uh, you have to understand that Saka, Eastern Scythians, uh, used Saka type of bow, which is exactly like Scythian bow, a short curved bow, distinctive shape with uh, uh, ends, with, with these curvy, curvy ends, uh, and kind of pistol grip design, slightly asymmetrical, very powerful, very uh, swift, very fast shooting bow. Uh, it was also very complex bow, a very complex design. It was a horn bow, sinew bow, but not like uh, later models, not like what most of us uh, uh, think of when we talk about Hornbow had a very complex design, and uh, we have depictions of them. Uh, they were found in Tianshan area in in Xinjiang, uh, which is the same pretty much aerial uh, Siberia, uh, Pazirik. Uh, so it, it's the same culture, and it extended all over Mongolia, Kazakhstan, uh, southern Russia, Ukraine, and etc. So we we were part of that culture. At at that point of time. We refer to this uh, period in, in Kazakh history as early nomad period. And there were a lot of tribes back then, Saka, uh, Masagets, uh, and etc. Usuns, and early Hans as well. Now, uh, the Hans, they kind of, uh, pretty much adopted everything uh, after the after the Saka tribes they were at the beginning they were virtually identical but later on they developed their own type of bow which is now known as the Han type of bow and it got spread quickly all over Eurasia uh, and completely uh, replaced the previous Saka Scythian version of the horse bow. And my personal opinion is that 
it wasn't uh, more powerful it wasn't uh, better but it was simpler it was simpler design it was a simpler construction and it was easier to make and that's why that's the main reason why it was an optimization and that's the main reason why it replaced the the previous model and uh, from there it kind of dominated a few centuries uh, in the Eurasian steppes and, and neighbors uh, who adopted it from the nomads and uh, the next uh, biggest modification that we know of happened in Turco-Mongol time and it kind of uh, evolved into the uh, the old Mongol type of bow which was I remind you non-contact it's not like the modern model, uh, modern Mongol bow. It the 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 sia the sia bent didn't touch the string. Only the 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 end touched the the string where it attached. So it was a non-contact bow. It had wider limbs, wider flatter limbs, and etc. So it was a different design, but it was also very efficient. And that's what the uh, uh, Mo Mongols of Genghis Khan used to conquer the world and build their empire and this design of the bow kind of dominated for a few centuries now uh, as uh, many of you of course know when the Mongol Empire uh, started dividing subdividing into smaller uh, but still very large uh, empires or, or sub empires one of them or hordes the best word one of them was the golden horde obviously the famous because um, it kind of touched uh, upon so many eurasian uh, peoples who were part of it or neighboring with it uh, from uh, central asia to western europe the near east so they they've uh, they've touched upon everyone at that point and <coughs> the type of bow that uh, spread there in the late centuries um, it, it was one of the type of the bows that kind of uh, in, got inherited by the Kazakh Hanate and Kazakh Hanate appeared when the Golden Horde started falling apart uh, in its turn after it got separated from the Genghis Khan Empire, it then started uh, dividing into smaller hordes. Uh, and one of them was the Ak Horde or White Horde. Along with, uh, there were a few others. There were Siberian Horde, there were Astrakhan Horde, Crimean Horde, uh, and Kazan Horde, and uh, Ak Horda which was the kind of uh, prototype uh, or, or proto uh, horde uh, that Kazakh Hanate, uh, on the territory of which the Kazakh Hanate later appeared in, uh, in the 16th century. That's uh, according to our official history, the beginning of the Kazakh Hanate. Now, um, I'm pretty much sure at this point, many of you either never heard of it or never kind of paid attention to it because you know it's just there is not enough information like I said about it and that's kind of a uh, an unfortunate thing because Kazakh Hanate uh, along with uh, the Jungar Hanate uh, and Nogai Horde these were the last nomadic uh, these were last nomadic uh, hordes that existed for a long time and they they were kind of the last men standing falling one after another the the the, the nogai uh, horde uh, fell the jungar horde fell and the kazakh horde was the last one it was the last uh, nomadic uh, horde nomadic state that existed in in the Eurasia, and yet it doesn't uh, get mentioned often. It doesn't get the credit uh, it deserves. 
uh, it doesn't get studied as well almost never gets mentioned everybody's talking about Hans and Mongols and you know Manchu and etc nobody talks about Kazakhs and yet it was the last nomadic state uh, when the entire world already switched to gunpowder weapons and modern era uh, military warfare and etc uh, the Kazakhs along with uh, surviving uh, nomadic Mongols and surviving nomadic uh, uh, Manchu and surviving nomadic uh, Jungars and Bashkirs and Turkmen and etc uh, they were the last peoples who were still using horse bow, even though they already adopted uh, gunpowder weapons. So they would carry their musket and their horse bow because it didn't replace it. It was complementary. They used them both in different situations, and uh, it was very it was a very interesting period. Um, uh, they they were. The, the nomadic civilization at this point was in decline. It was failing in in all directions, in 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 all aspects. But it was built so well. It it was so strong that it lasted and lasted. It resisted. The Russian Empire uh, kept pressing. The Chinese Empire kept pressing. The um, Central Asian states, uh, Iran. So the ring of these uh, settled nations or as we refer to them as Sarts, the Sardic states they were kind of uh, pressing against the nomadic states and in the heart of this uh, nomadic realm surviving shrinking nomadic realm was the Kazakh steppe and the Kazakhs were the last uh, nomads uh, still free uh, still independent still using horse bow. And uh, that's uh, something I cover briefly in my book. And in the next video, I will talk about particular types of bows that were used in the Kazakh Hanate and um, the evidence that we have of it. Thank you. See you in the next video.